All right, so we're back live with Randy Niels and uh, our next talk. So let me do a little introduction for Randy here. Uh, Randy Niels, W3RWN, was first licensed in Ontario, Canada as VE3RWN in the early 90s. He's been involved with repeater link systems, wide area packet radio networks, a bit of VHF UHF contesting, and most of the areas of amateur radio that intersect with the internet. Professionally, Randy is a telecommunications engineer and worked at Motorola on mobile data systems early in his career. Randy escaped to California in 2007 for work, became licensed as KI6TWT, and decided that contesting on 10 gigahertz and 24 gigahertz in the Central Valley of California was kind of fun. Yeah, not so much here, by the way. But uh, as part of the Ham Radio Witness Protection Program, Randy changed his call to W3RWN and relocated to Seattle in 2013 to work for another big tech company that needed a global network. He joined Seattle ACS, where recent projects include several Winlink gateways and a growing DMR repeater network known as the SeattleDMR.org. Randy's also secretary of the Highline Amateur Radio Club. We wouldn't have guessed, by the way. Um, when he's not playing digital ham radio, he manages a team of network engineers and some labs at a local tech company. So please uh, welcome Randy Niels. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Well, I'm here to give your uh, afternoon weather report. And uh, I, I know that if there are people across the country or elsewhere not normally familiar with Seattle, they might think that Seattle rains all the time. I can assure you this is not actually a... a a fancy zoom background it's it's real like see there's that's not a background <laughs> it's uh, 86 at SeaTac airport and i thought well i might as well be in the backyard so here i am let's get started i'm here to talk to you today um, about uh winlink and related uh, vara uh, fm particularly but vara generally which is a modem system that works with uh, winlink first i want to call out that uh, Scott Curry, NS7C, uh, gratefully provided me his slide deck. So really, all I had to do was show up in the backyard here and talk to you. And I want to uh, thank Scott for that. Let's get underway. Uh, the talk today is going to be a little bit of an overview. We're going to start with WinLink, which is the email radio system. You may have heard earlier today about WinLink, and I'll try not to drag that out. I'll assume that there's a fair bit of information already out there about WinLink. And then we'll talk about where Vara FM fits. Then we're going to get into a little demo that I recorded earlier because, well, you know how demos work, right? So uh, let's see if I can get Zoom to, uh, to bring up the slides I have, and uh, we'll get underway. Well, in theory, you should see a uh, slide deck. And uh, as with all things, I'm getting the uh, spinning ball here, which is fantastic, and we're on slide seven. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure why that's happening. Let me try that again. Actually, like all day, we had just tested this, what, 10 minutes ago? We did. You, you, you provide some patter while I disconnect and reconnect. I've got something going on here in the background I have to, to stop. So I'll, I'll be right back, Scott. All right. Yeah, we just went through this, and it worked flawlessly, just like all day long today. We tested all of this stuff thoroughly. So let's see here. So I do need to mention, uh, we have a schedule change. This is still very relevant. Uh, the uh, Winlink Tips and Tricks presentation that we had this morning at 10 o'clock uh, did not go off uh, properly. And all of those folks agreed to, the, like most of the Winlink development team agreed to come back in at five. So after Randy will have an actual full uh, real uh, talk from the Winlink development team. Phil, share it as the lead, but the rest of the team will be here. Um, I guess the good news to that is um, we don't have anything after them, so we're not going to be time crunched. And they had a pretty pretty full presentation that looks fantastic. So uh, the beauty of this is they're going to have lots of time to be able to deliver it properly. And we'll get it all recorded so we can have, uh, have that all posted as well. So if you can't hang out, um, obviously uh, we'll have the recording, but it'll be nice to have 
this is a great opportunity to have access to all of the WinLink development team folks and ask them lots of questions. So hopefully we'll see Randy back here in a minute. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to toss up a little thing. I swear this is not our fault this time. All the other ones were our fault, but not this one. Um, so uh, we'll be right back. I'm unmuting you. It won't let me unmute you. Oh, there you are. We are live. We both should be live. I'm spotlighting you. Oh, put your mic back on so we can talk about all the challenges we face today. There we go. We've had quite a day, haven't we, Scott? Yeah, so we, um, well, uh, I don't know if I explained, this is our 13th, our lucky 13th year. It's proven to be quite uh, prescient. Uh, this is, the, I think, the most difficulty we've had the entire time we've done this. Uh, I can't remember anything. It, it seemed like a simple problem. We don't have, uh, in the past, we've done some relatively sophisticated things where we had people in a room and we had people dialing in, you know, over, over some uh, virtual service like this. And we tried to mix room audio with uh, people in the people in the room with microphones asking questions of a speaker remotely, while all simultaneously trying to stream it out to the internet and record it. And uh, today, this seemed like this is going to be a much simpler problem. We've just got the zoom room off to YouTube and we'll record that thing and it'll be fantastic. And uh, uh, that has not exactly proven to be the case. Gremlins, absolutely gremlins. Yeah. We uh, we certainly have discovered uh, the, some of the challenges. We had tested it. Not people shouldn't think we went into this cold. We tested it a number of different times. I think that makes us look worse, though. We tested this, and we still no, anyway. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, we've had some other challenges, but I, I think this is something that many, many people have been dealing with in the last few weeks. There have been lots of jokes about uh, how experienced people are with Zoom, and uh, yet there are still hiccups there with everybody. But uh, I, I've got to say that all in all, what has struck me the most about today is how we have had speakers from all around the world and we've had a lot of engagement and frankly i've been very excited about the content i cannot imagine how many dollars and how many new projects i'm going to undertake as a result of this and my wife uh, kd7law is over manning the chat room and she's been giving me a list of her new projects based on things that she's been watching today so the hopper household is going to probably sprout some new technology and yeah, there'll be exciting things going. And it's because of this contract, uh, this, uh, uh, boy, my brain has stopped working because of the conference. And I, I think that we, uh, we should be happy with what we've managed to accomplish. The challenge of course, with our club is having the finances to do this. So this is the pandering for the donations. If, if you enjoyed some of the content today, please, please take a few minutes to click that PayPal button, send us a few dollars. This allows us, hopefully next year, we'll be back to a 
physical venue. We're not going to give up on the webcasting. We're certainly going to do that more uh, than we did before. And uh, this will allow us to fly people in. Oh, there he is. And it looks like Randy is back, so good. Randy, are you back with us? I don't have any audio for you. Why is that? You there? Hmm. There. Now do we have audio? Randy? That was me unmuting him. Hey, there we go. I hear some scuffing. Are you with us, Randy? I am. Can you hear me now? We can. Very good. Uh, I just yanked Welcome the US, back. I yanked the USB cable up, plugged back in. Apologies, but uh, something happened in my Mac, and the background task was doing something. I think it was iCloud syncing or something, so Not I shut it off. Mac. I know, right? I mean, we're running redundant operating systems today, but I think they're all giving us trouble. Sorry about that. I'm back, and I think I'm going to be okay now. Let's uh, jump right in. Uh, you've done the introduction, Scott, and I apologize uh, to the audience for that delay. I'm going to bring up the uh, the screen share, which is the uh, slide deck in the background here. Let's see if uh, let's be positive and say this is going to work. That look okay, Scott. All right, I'm Randy. I'm going to be speaking about uh, VAR Digital on WinLink Express, and. Uh, we're going to uh, have a few slides where I'm going to review a little bit about um, uh, WinLink in general, but I won't do that too much because I think we had uh, another good talk earlier today and there's lots of resources out on the internet about WinLink. So just generally, uh, WinLink is an email program for ham radio and VARA is a modem that plugs into it. It's a soft modem, which you may have heard earlier in the day uh, people speak about. So WinLink uh, has a lot of uh, use uh, cases in the uh, MCOM space in, in amateur radio. And uh, obviously it's uh, various modes of connectivity, you know, Telnet, which is over the internet, um, radio, um, both HF and VHF. And it also has a capability while you can use WinLink to, to speak to the servers over the internet or to, uh, or to um, over radio and ultimately to the central message system. It also has a peer to peer mode, which means it has a number of fallback modes that make it really quite well suited to uh, be a main digital communication tool for, for MCOM. And I think almost everywhere uh, where there's an MCOM team, they understand WinLink and are using it in, in growing their skills. Um, WinLink can also do binary file attachments. Uh, I think if you're used to using email in a professional environment, you know that emailing files around is one way of getting things around the office. Um, WinLink has that capability, maybe not quite the same. You're not going to email a, a 20 meg PowerPoint with a whole lot of graphics to someone, but there is a file attachment. Generally, you want to keep it less than 100 kilobytes. And uh, certainly with 1200 bit per second packet, the attachment capability is usually things like text files or very small files. I'd like to hope with Faro, we're going to demo you a higher speed capability today. And I think that opens up uh, the capability with higher speed to to send things like Excel spreadsheets or small image files uh, that can really help us with served agencies in, in the income space. Um, we're we're going to talk about sound card digital modes. So if we've you know if you've been in packet radio for a while, you know that we all used to buy a, a two hundred or a three hundred dollar TNC that was a, a little logic state machine. You know an EEPROM in there sometimes. Some of the more modern ones. Uh, you can program your call sign in. And it was a piece of hardware that generally spoke 1,200 bits per second AFSK, uh, audio frequency shift keying, uh, over our radio. Effectively, that was a modem that made a couple of tones, and it turned those tones on and off. And, and we got AX25 over the air. Soundcard Digital has enabled us to have a software-controlled modem, and it allows us to iterate much faster. So where we had 1,200 bit per second hardware modems for a very, very long time, um, sound card digital changes really fast. Uh, you know, VARA FM is something I've only been familiar with for about a year and a half or two years. Uh, I was working with the Highline Club where I'm the secretary and we were working on uh, supporting digital communications for our MCOM team. We thought, wow, this 1200 bit per second stuff, it's kind of okay, but 
it doesn't really meet what our served agencies need. So we were hunting around. We tried 4,800 bits per second using the Direwolf uh, soft modem. And we heard from Scott Curry about Vara FM. And we're like, wow, well, let's, let's try this thing. A little bit skeptical. We thought, oh, higher speeds are probably hard to, hard to do. Turned out it was actually pretty simple. And we, we now, as a club, operate two Vara wide mode uh, digis, or, or actually uh, RMS gateways, which uh, support our, our MCOM ops. And we don't actually operate any uh, AX25, and we're encouraging our, our members to, to use Vara. So I think one of the things about sound card digital modes are uh, fast iteration, multiple choices. So you buy the sound card hardware, the interface to your radio kind of once or twice, and you uh, have multiple different software versions that you can run on it, and people are continuously innovating. Uh, a sound card interface, uh, so sound card obviously comes from the sound card in your personal computer, uh, but a lot of what we do involve USB sound cards that are plugged into your computer. And uh, this is really what's inside those interfaces. There's a USB interface to your radio, there is an audio codec, and uh, then audio analog circuits, which go to the TX and RX audio of your radio on the right-hand side of this picture, and the all-important PTT keying circuit. Now, um, the PTT keying circuit can take a couple of different forms uh, in a signal link device that's a box-operated system. And in uh, some of the systems we use for VARA, it's controlled by an IO on the audio codec interface. The audio codec we use uh, in VARA was originally uh, intended as a USB headphone uh, audio codec, and they actually use one of the volume controls as the uh, PTT signal, which the software can, uh, can trigger. So uh, the interface is a, a simple signal interface. It's not an actual TNC per se. It, its job is to take the digital signal inside the computer, convert it to an analog audio signal, but it needs the software running on the computer to, to do that. Uh, on HF, uh, you can, can run Winmore or RDOP, which are actually included in the WinLink Express software. And then additionally, you can add the VARA HF software, and that will give you up to 7,000 bits per second using uh, an external uh, add-on piece of software to WinLink. Uh, there's packet VHF and UHF, commonly at 1,200 bits per second, but some enterprising folks are also running uh, 9600 bits per second, typically the G3RUH protocol. And that's done with either Direwolf or Sound modem, uh, the very common soft modems that you would run. And then VARA FM, uh, both VHF and UHF. And that supports up to 25,200 bits per second, again, using the sound card interface, and works over what we would call narrowband FM radio. So our standard 2 meter or 440 or even 6 meter radio, uh, you interface it and in the narrow mode, which is approximately equivalent to 1,200 bit per second. Uh, if you're using one of the Japanese radios that have that nomenclature, there's a 1,200 mode and a 9,600 mode. So in narrow mode, you can get uh, probably around 12,000, 10,000. And if you connect it to the 9,600 bit per second mode on your radio, and again, that mode is not so much a data speed as it is a wide bandwidth of the audio path in your radio. So effectively flat audio and discriminator audio flat transmit audio, well, and we regularly get that 25,000 bit per second on a nice clean RF path. We'll have a, a demo a little later. The signal link, these things are everywhere. They're a wonderful little box. They work really well on uh, your HF radio. They have a Vox PTT circuit in it. Um, one of the downfalls for VARA with respect to the device is that they have transformers, but these things are everywhere and they will work well on the lower speeds of, of VARA, and of course, with most of the sound modem protocols that are out there. Other interfaces uh, that I'll speak about are the rim light, which is the upper left. This is made by a repeater builder, which is a ham who runs a, an internet website. And uh, this design is uh, set up with a 16 pin connector. If you're familiar with some of the Motorola commercial radios that have a 16 pin option connector on the back, this plugs directly in. And one of the big advantages is there's really no soldering here. This plugs in the option connector, you program the radio properly, and that's a USB interface on the right hand side of that little green board. So if you're uh, not really wanting to turn into a making a cable and putting all those pins in that little tiny connector, that's a pretty good option. Uh, another device that we work regularly with is the Masters Communication DRA30, which is in the upper right. Again, this is a, another ham. Uh, 
that makes these these boards and was originally involved in the repeater controller space. These boards first were designed for the all-star voice over IP linking system, and they've been uh, started to be embraced by the VARA community. And uh, recently, uh, uh, Masters Communication came out with the DRA series, which were optimized to, for uh, digital use. We've had great success with these. Um, one of the challenges was making a cable that went from the DB9 connector to whatever your radio interface is. And with some recent discussions, uh, there's now a cable option available. If you're, if you're owning one of those uh, Japanese radios that have the mini DIN 6 connector for data, you can now get an adapter and use a very simple AV cable so that you end up with a $20 solution to get the cable to your radio rather than having to uh, solder and make cables and, and so on. So if you're kind of that kind of ham and you just wants to buy something that works, Master's Communication Board works great, works with all kinds of different amateur radios that have the DIN 6 connector. And if you're the type that want to solder up some stuff, it works with a lot of different radios. And ultimately, uh, Scott has a little picture of one that he built, which is a CM108-based USB audio fob wired up with his own cable. So this doesn't have to be an expensive thing. Those little USB fobs on the bottom can be as cheap as 8 bucks on eBay. Um, and if you want to put the time in, you can make a, an audio interface that you uh, have sweat equity into. <laughs> or if you just want to buy something, you have that option as well. So let's see the resources needed. So for WinLink Express, you, you need a Windows computer. Um, you need a transceiver uh, that you can uh, run sound card modem with, a signal link or similar USB sound card interfaces, cables, external uh, application, perhaps VAR or VARFM. The WinLink software is free, but a donation is uh, suggested. And uh, the VARA registration, if you want to get the full speed out of VARA, is $69 per call sign, or you can do a group purchase with your club, and they're typically at 50 bucks for that. Now, before you freak out about that $69, because like software should be free, right? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> uh, VARA works extremely well in level one, which is its 1,000 bit per second mode. And one of the things we've done in the local club here is to tell people to go try VARA see if it works for them and actually use it in the 1000 bit per second mode because it's our experience that it actually works better than AX25 at 1000 bits per second. It has equivalent throughput to AX25 and in many cases actually works better in a low signal environment because it's a better modem. So don't let the $69 stop your club from embracing VARA. Use the free version and then let people use it if they like it, then they decide to spend the $69 uh, and get the unlocking key which opens up the other several modes that it has for higher speeds. So uh, hardware connections. Many of the radios such as the Japanese amateur radios have a data connection. Most of them, something in the range of 70 models, have uh, this standardized DIN 6 connector um, and you can get a cable that is pre-made, plugs into that. Uh, you can use 1200 or 9600 bit per second mode. Uh, we are finding that using 9600 bit per second mode all the time doesn't really seem to have many drawbacks. Um, it's effectively wider audio bandwidth. And uh, most people that have these radios have had great success with that. I, I will admit to, to owning a Yezu 991A, and I was extremely disappointed to find out that the data connector on the back of it implemented RTTY rather than a 9600 bit per second port. And uh, even though it has a built-in USB interface, uh, myself and a few colleagues have been unable to get it to work at, uh, at high speeds with VARA. So if anyone gets their 991A working with VARA wide at high speed, please let me know. There's about four or five of us that would really love to uh, figure that one out. Um, the data connection on the back is used of your radio. It's used for analog signals. So even though the radio manufacturer might refer to it as 1200 or 9600 bits per second, it's really about flat audio and discriminator audio output of your radio than it is a specific speed limit. Uh, the 1200 connections go through regular voice path, just like your microphone. That includes pre-emphasis and de-emphasis, narrows the auto, audio bandwidth to about three kilohertz, typically has a high pass filter so that eliminates PL tones or CTCSS tones, uh, those uh, tone frequencies you might use to access the repeater. The 9600 connections on your radio go directly to the modulator and to the discriminator. So in theory, you can get about six kilohertz of audio bandwidth. So three kilohertz versus six kilohertz of, of audio. And the pin assignments are pretty standard. It's around about 70 models of, of uh, radios in the amateur family from most of the Japanese manufacturers that 
that have that standardized data connector. Let's talk a bit about the software. So this is really software architecture of your PC. You've got the, P the PC hardware, the operating system, the user programs. So you've got WinLink Express in the, in the upper right. It uses internal TCP communications within the system to talk to the sound modem, and then sound modem talks to the signal link. Uh, so the different programs you're running are communicating in the background and ultimately talk to the signal link. That's set up in your uh, WinLink Express program. This goes into uh, software setup of VARA HF. Um, and the slides are going to be available, so I may breeze through some of these, but we'll find a way to get the slides to you, and I will add that my uh, call sign, W3RWN at ARRL.net, is a good way to reach me. If for some reason you'd like these slides, you can't find them otherwise, ping me, and we'll figure out how to get that to you. Um, again, uh, configuration, and this slide we're, we're talking here about configuring the local loopback address and the port that it uses for that socket communications in Windows. I, I won't go into the great detail here. And then again, setup of the, uh, the, the VARA TNC itself, or really the VARA software TNC. And you can begin to see that there are some meters and a waterfall display in the bottom. And this is where you would configure, if you have the registration key, you would configure your call sign and the registration key. And uh, this enables the, the higher levels in the, the modem, what, what differentiates you from the free version to the $69 paid version for higher speed. And then again, uh, it has capability to control uh, through uh, CAD or CIV, the rig controls for HF radio. Uh, you can have fun with all that. And this is particular to HF because you may want the radio to change frequencies and, and be in certain places at certain times. For example, using the propagation predicting capability of WinLink to figure out which gateway you would want to connect to. And then again, uh, capability within the program to set up the level set. There's a tune set, uh, tune setting, and you can uh, use the LC function in your radio to make sure you have the drive level correct. This is in relation to VARA HF. Software setup again. Uh, we're in the uh, VARA FM setup and uh, configuring where the location of the, the VARA FM modem is on your Windows PC. And then uh, again, configuring. Uh, and, and this is probably a, an important screen to highlight. There's a PTT screen here, and this tells your, your VARA modem, your soft modem, where the PTT line to control the transmit of your radio is. You can either use Vox, which would be an appropriate choice if you're using a signal link, or if you're using one of the RA boards or repeater builder boards, which are based on the uh, CM108 or CM119 audio chip, you would use an RA board, and that uses the hardware control line from the audio codec. So you select that, and then, uh, there's a new feature uh, on, on FM where we can use auto-tune. I'll uh, have that in my demo a little later. Uh, you have the option with the FM mode to use either narrow or wide. This was previously in earlier versions of VARA called 1200 or 9600, and was really related to the nomenclature that the Japanese radio manufacturers use to describe that data connector on the back. But it's really about audio bandwidth. So a few moments ago, I showed a slide. I was talking about how the 1200 bit per second connection on your radio gives you about three kilohertz of audio bandwidth. The 9600 bit per second connection on the back of your radio on a uh, VHF, UHF radio gives you about six kilohertz. Um, we tend to run all of our nodes in wide mode and the users can be in either narrow or wide to connect to them. There is a auto bandwidth sort of functionality. There are some peculiarities to it that you can more perfectly optimize a narrow connection if you're in narrow mode. But for the most part, we're having great success in, in our neighborhood running uh, wide mode and uh, getting users to use that flat audio and to maximize. And I, and I will say there's a few people that are a little competitive and we all like to make sure we're maximizing our bandwidth and maybe a little, you know, emails back and forth bragging about it. So uh, those that do get that top 25,210 bits per second are pretty happy to, to talk about it. And it's pretty fun because I don't think any of us have saw this kind of capability over a narrow band uh, VHF, UHF radio ever. I think uh, we all felt that 9,600 bits per second was uh, hard to achieve before because of some of the audio requirements. And I do think that uh, this 25,000 capability is, is really quite amazing. So the uh, transmit and receive audio levels uh, are uh, setting in your Windows uh, sound settings. And this helps uh, preliminarily set the 
the microphone, uh, which in this case is actually the receive from your radio, and the speakers, which in is actually the transmit drive to your uh, radio. Uh, you need to have those roughly in a, in a, in a middle-range setting toward, toward, towards the high end to start off. If you've got a signal link, you've also got a TX and RX knob on the front of the signal link, which also work in, in companion with the audio settings in Windows. Um, the VU meter in this picture, uh, over in the, the VARA FM screen, there's a VU meter in green. Um, you can see that this is about uh, the one o'clock position on the, on the dial. That's roughly where we found good success. Uh, 1 to 2 p.m. on the clock face is a good space to be with, uh, with open uh, squelch discriminator uh, to, to drive the modem. And there's an auto adjust function in there. It takes that audio and, and adjusts it as it needs to in software. Uh, in this case, uh, this slide is speaking to the auto tune functionality. The auto tune functionality is a capability in the recent versions of VARA FM which allow you to transmit to a node uh, with varying audio levels controlled by the modem program. And then the node answers back to your client PC and tells your client PC what drive level to set for the optimum signal to noise. So, so just to repeat that again, you put your auto-tune setting on uh, in your client. Uh, your client talks to the local node uh, on RMS gateway and sends 11 different transmissions at different audio levels. And then the node answers back and says, yeah, use this one, because uh, that's where it had the best signal to noise on the modem. Your client then auto adjusts its transmit level. And in this case, you can see the drive level was set to minus 14 dB, and it has a signal to noise ratio of 33 dB. That's a very high signal to noise ratio. That would be equivalent to being just a couple of miles from a node and having a, a non a block kind of line of sight communications on, on a good quality path. So that would be a, a signal to noise that would give you the, the highest speed. Uh, so this auto tune functionality is fantastic because I know most hams don't have a service monitor or other way of checking the deviation of their transmitter. This is a really significant advantage of VARA FM. And it means that within the program, even before you start WinLink, you can run this uh, VARA FM auto tune capability Verify that the uh, VAR FM modem on your PC is working properly, that it can talk to the VAR FM modem at the local RMS gateway site for WinLink, get all that working, and help you isolate and troubleshoot any problems you might be having. Uh, just to speak a little bit about what's going on in VARA. So VARA, you know, this is speaking to version 3.05, which is, I think, now the second to most recent version. This is all, all very consistent, though, in the, in the minor releases. So there is a wide mode, which again is that mode that optimizes for wide audio bandwidth of your radio. And there's a narrow mode, optimized more for the three kilohertz uh, narrower audio that we would have on a microphone audio. So the key difference between the left and the right is that in the top mode on Vera Wide, you can see that there are 116 carriers. And in the top mode on Vara FM, you can see the chart says that there are 55 carriers. Let me explain carriers in this context. These are like individual tone signals. And if you think about the audio bandwidth of your radio, it's very similar to having perhaps a stereo with a graphic equalizer, where you've got these uh, knobs that you can control various frequencies of the audio coming out of your stereo. So think of these carriers as individually to uh, individual tone frequencies from the lowest end, maybe as low as 50 hertz on your radio, all the way up to the top end, which is probably in the area of three kilohertz or maybe three, 3.6 kilohertz or, or greater. Uh, with the wide mode, you have a, a broad number of carriers that, that encompass uh, the area of the FM radio where we would normally transmit CTCSS tones. And we also have uh, tones at the very high end that are beyond the normal voice frequencies that we wouldn't need for voice communications. So wide uses the complete capability of your FM radio modulates 116 tones, and then we can go to more advanced modulation. The mod column in this case speaks to the different modulations that are used. So you can see that the, the VARA protocols on FM include 4 PSK, 16 QAM, 32 QAM, 64 QAM, 128 QAM, and 256 QAM. Now, a key differentiation with VARA FM and uh, AX25 is that VAR FM is a rate adaptive modem. What, what does rate adaptive mean, Randy? Well, 
Rate adaptive means that the modem senses the carrier quality of the path. It senses the signal to noise ratio and it selects the best modulation that delivers the most bandwidth over that connection. So if you have a really strong signal to noise, as was shown in the previous screen at 30 or 33 uh, dB, very strong, what we would call a full quieting signal, your, your modem is going to adapt to the higher modulation, deliver more bandwidth. If you're stuck at some checkpoint way out in the boonies and you're over the hill from the local node and you just got to get some data through, you might have a weak signal. You might be down in the noise. It might even be at a noisy level where you could not even communicate with voice. And you would still be able to make a minimal connection with VARA, even down in the, the, the 10, 11, 12 dB signal to noise ratio, and still be able to move a little bit of data. So I think this is a really big differentiation from AX25 or from packet 1200 bit per second, is that we have a rate adaption going on. It selects the fastest speed that it can for the quality of the signal. And I think that's a real benefit for, for hams who are out there doing events, who are out there trying to help in emergencies, because it's not a science project that you have to figure out what speed to run. It actually figures this out for you automatically, uses the software capability and tries to work um, given the signal that you're, you're able to generate at the time. Now, just to speak to the left and the right again, FM narrow is on the right. This is if you're using effectively the 1200 bit per second connections on your radio. FM wide is on the left. That's for the 9600 bit per second or the flat audio if you're using, say, a commercial um, two-way radio. And again, the net rate is the raw speed over the air. You can see that VARA wide goes up to 25,200 bit per second or 25 kilobits. You can see on the right-hand side that VARA narrow goes up to 12 kilobits per second. So conclusion, Winlink use continues to grow, especially for MCOM use. Winlink development team, which you heard earlier from today, continues to enhance capabilities to, to adapt to changing needs. Steady improvements are being implemented and sound card interfaces and more modes provide low cost and high performance solutions. So that same signal link you bought four or five years ago still works pretty well at the narrow uh, speeds in VARA. And it's really not horribly expensive to get into these higher speeds. In fact, that eight, 10 year old, you know, amateur radio you have in the shelf that has that data connector on the back can do this new VARA FM wide stuff just fine in a plug and play mode. Um, signal links uh, have a, a transformer in them and there's a, uh, a problem with low audio. So this uh, slide talks to a way that you can change out those transformers or modify your signal link if you are a soldering iron and climbed ham. Um, the, the low audio is necessary to get the full performance out of some of the wider stuff. And uh, let's go on to our little demo. I'm going to stop this uh, sharing. And let's switch over to uh, our video of the uh, demo. going to check in with Scott while I'm uh, talking here. And is everything going okay, Scott? You're hearing my audio and we're ready to do the demo on the video? You look great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out here, uh, the sun's going down, but it's still about 85. Um, and, you know, see, Seattle doesn't rain all the time. All right. Hopefully, uh, you can still hear my voice okay. Um, this is a, a Windows movie that I grabbed earlier, and I've fired up uh, Winlink Express on my PC. I am now selecting uh, the VARA FM soft modem. It opens a session in the right window, and that session controls the VARA FM modem, which was running in the background. I highlighted the VARA FM modem so that you would see it on the screen. I've now opened a session, and I've gone into the channel selection, selected a local node, which is the W7 ACS Magnolia node in Seattle. For reference, that's about 12 miles away from me. It's a decent, OK kind of a path. I should have a pretty high signal. And just to check that, I'm going to run that auto tune mode. So I'm going to put in W7ACS-10 here. I'm going to click that little electrical socket. And you can hear the modem working in the background here. It's sending 11 different levels of audio modem tones. And the Magnolia node responded back and said that I have a 31 dB signal to noise and automatically set the transmit level. Now I'm connected to the mode. To the, to the node, rather. And you see the first response from the node that shows up in the uh, constellation diagram. 
at the bottom of this Vara FM screen that has all the green, you'll see a, a one in a bracket followed by a bits per second. That's telling us the raw over the air speed of the data connection between my PC through my radio to the Magnolia ACS node. Now, I can't talk as fast as it can switch, but you can see that it's already moved into level 10 at 19 kilobits per second. And you can see the constellation diagram on the right getting more complex with a whole bunch of tic-tac-toe squares and dots. It has moved into a QAM mode and has accelerated its uh, transmission. Now, there's a green graph in, also in that VARA mode, and you in that VARA window, rather, and you can see that as the handshakes go back and forth, the green graph is getting filled out to the right. These are blocks of transmission. And on each block of transmission, VARA is handshaking and determining if the signal to noise ratio was good for the present speed, if it could go higher, or if it needed to step back. And in fact, it just stepped back um, and you can see a slight change in that closing block. Uh, that's how fast that took to move um, a total of 60, I can't quite see it here, but 69 kilobytes. You can see the connection speed, and we can see that we were running uh, not at the full speed of 25 kilobits per second, but rather about uh, 19. That was an image file with a cute little dog, safe for public presentations. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to reply back, and I'm going to attach an Excel spreadsheet. In this case, uh, I th if I remember correctly, it was a uh, 90 kilobyte Excel spreadsheet. I want to show you the uplink capability for the ability for me to send a file back to the uh, WinLink system. So we've attached a file, or uh, well, we're about to, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to add that into the WinLink Express uh, email. We're going to post it to the outbox, and we're going to go back to the Vara FM session on the right-hand side, start a connection again to the Magnolia Gateway. We're now connected, and it's going to upload that file. This time, you'll see the transmitted data uh, show up differently. It's going to show up as a red color, indicating data from me to the node. And again, we quickly moved into a higher gear. We're at level, 11, uh, level 10, and I'm now transmitting to the Magnolia node. You can probably hear the modem tones in the background. We're at uh, 20 kilobits per second. Now, it's hard for you to feel what it's like moving a 20 kilobyte file, um, or, or moving rather a, a larger file, but at 20 kilobits per second. Um, we had been playing with 4,800 bit per second packet. We were able to move an image file around and things that would take us, you know, seven or eight minutes of transmitting at 4,800 bits per second you know, suddenly became really quick on, on VARA. And that's when the light went on and we said, this is really the thing we need for MCOM. This lets us help our served agencies take a relatively simple list of things, you know, a small Excel spreadsheet, um, some PDF document, and kind of move it around and uh, help them work in a mode that they're familiar with. Uh, forms, they're wonderful. Winlink Express has great forms systems. We use them a lot. Um, let me get back to what I'm doing here. I'm now going to show you that it actually works really well in, in low noise signals as well. So we are um, connected and, and we're, we're posting a uh, message. After this is done, we're going to uh, demonstrate a, a low quality connection to a more distant node. There we go. So now, if I remember how I did this video, we're going to uh, <laughs> going to change my call sign to the club call sign, and we posted an Excel file to the club uh, WinLink address. I'm now going to open the session again, this time as uh, NC7G. I'm going to select a different node. This time, I'm going to use Scott's node, which is on VHF, and he's down in Auburn, which is south of me. The path, however, is obscured. It isn't a direct line of sight. It's quite a weak path. And what I want to show you is here's, here's a measure of the path quality to Scott's node down in Auburn. I'm going to run that auto-tune setting again, and we'll see what his node is reporting to me regarding the signal-to-noise of the path between us. So we're now sending those 11 test packets. And again, you don't have to do this all the time. 
I'm just doing this for a, for this demo to give you an indication of the response. So his node is reporting 9 dB signal to noise. You would not be able to understand the audio. And in fact, when I was running this, the squelch on my Yeezy radio that I was using for this demo was not actually opening. Uh, but because I was connected to discriminator audio, my modem was decoding the signal. So we're now moving a very small attachment. If I remember correctly, this was a five kilobyte Excel file. We're, we're operating in an obscured radio path with 9 dB signal to noise. And you can see me downloading a file, even a very weak signal. So I want to emphasize that Vara FM is not only about being able to send data fast at 25 kilobits per second, but it's my theory, I believe it's accurate, that it actually works better in low signal environments than our classic AX25. Another benefit of VARA, I'm sounding like a salesperson here, we are in Puget Sound, which is a water body in, the, in a valley or in a, a low area, and we are surrounded by mountains. We get a lot of multipath from the mountains with our VHF and UHF signals reflecting back, and that makes a complex environment for modems to work. So we are finding that the uh, way that, that VARA works with, with its various speed levels, with the forward error correction that's built in, and again with the, the OFDM functionality that's in the modem, that it seems to work quite well in a multipath environment because not all of the tone signals that VARA FM uses are affected by the multipath we get. It's able to be quite effective in our radio environment we're very pleased by it. I can certainly speak for the Highline Club, where I'm the, the secretary of the club and involved with our MCOM activity. Um, I'm involved with Seattle ACS, and ACS in sort of the Western uh, state model is auxiliary communication service, uh, uh, very much an adjunct to what others may call ARIES. Um, we are using uh, VAR and embracing it quite strongly in Seattle, and I would encourage you and your groups out there, wherever you are, to also really strongly look at implementing uh, VAR FM on your uh, local RMS Winlink gateways and take the extra step and implement the wide mode. You will love it. Uh, you will be able to support much greater communications. And I think as we think about supporting served agencies in the MCOM world, um, we're able to, to help them move small files around, small spreadsheets and things that they might normally work with so that if forms and conventional uh, uh, you know, ICS forms uh, are not exactly what they need, you can support a broader set of things. That wraps up my talk. I want to thank MicroHams for a great event. I think it was great that you pivoted to uh, online and uh, live from the backyard here in South Seattle. <laughs> W3RWN, turning it back to Scott. Hey, so we have a, a number of questions. It looks like Scott Curry is actually in the chat room answering some, stealing your thunder. He's answering he's, some he, of those He's questions. not stealing anything. He loaned me his slide deck. <laughs> So uh, what, we should probably take a look at some of these. So one of them, for example, uh, you mentioned you're running a Mac. It says, will Vera FM run under Wine? Sounds like maybe. Uh, I've not They're tried using... it. I have Parallels okay. on one of my Macs, and I have successfully ran it on Windows in Parallels. I have not found any timing issues or reasons why it, why it won't work. Um, I can't speak to Wine. I don't know for sure about that particular use case, but I have done it in, in uh, Parallels. OK. Uh, so what about the? The USB sound card in something like an IC7100, would that handle wider bandwidths? I know it's limited to like 3.6K, like maximum transmit receive bandwidth. What does that do for its maximum speed capability? Uh, if, I, I'm not familiar with the 7100 directly, and uh, I bet you have one, Scott. So I think you and I probably uh, need Should, to figure out how to make test you try it. this out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I, I did indicate I have a, a 991A with a built in USB interface, and, uh, and it's not just myself. We have about four of us trying it. We're unable to make it work. That could be mm -hmm. something that we don't understand about one of the 300 menu settings. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, and I don't want to, to flog Yezu on it uh, just yet because we haven't sort of bought it to the, to the bottom of, the, of the, the list of possibilities. But so far, we've not been able to get it to work, and it's pretty disappointing. We wanted to pivot to using the data connector on the back and thought, yeah, this is no problem. We'll just use an external $50 interface. And then we found out that, no, they added an RTTY pin to the, to the data connector and don't have a 9600 bit per second pin. Right. So we're like, wow, that, that 991. Uh, it's still a great HF radio, but uh, it's not so good for VARA FM. We're, right. we're having great success with a lot of other radios. I personally use uh, Yezu FT8900 and 8800s. They're working well for me. 
many of our nodes are using Motorola CDM radios, which you can find on, on eBay kind of in the $125 to $200 price range. And that little uh, repeater builder rim light max track model plugs directly in the back. So no soldering iron, you can get a node in the air. You're, you're not asking this question, but I'll, I'll give another answer for something we learned. Putting a bandpass filter on your uh, Winlink nodes is actually a pretty fantastic idea. Most of the radio sites we operate have repeaters and other things on it. Um, we, we have a node right now that doesn't have a bandpass filter on it. It's on 439 megs. We have a DMR repeater near it. We haven't been able to get to the site because of the coronavirus thing, but uh, we're anticipating we need to put a bandpass filter on a, our, our simplex nodes, particularly when in the high RF environment because we're desensing some of our um, mobile radios that we're using. The CDM has got a really nice front end, but when you've got a 70 watt transmitter three feet away, uh, you, can, you can overload. So think about those RF things when you're putting nodes in the air, but at the same time, uh, don't try to just have one RMS node for your whole community. Small, many small nodes are actually better than kind of one big node because in an actual emergency, not all of them are going to fail. Um, okay, so that's, uh, yeah, I was curious about, so I know like the 7100 has that 9600 baud port in the back as an actual data connector. So that's available, but uh, of course it has a USB port built into it, right? And of course it'd be so much easier if you could just talk to the USB port. But, We're gonna have uh, to try that. I, I Sounds that way, yes. I haven't, uh, I haven't actually installed this stuff yet. Um, are there, uh, other software modems that interoperate with VARA? Uh, well, VARA FM itself is a software modem. Uh, there's two flavors I should mention. So there's VARA HF and then there's VARA FM. They are two separate applications. Winlink Express knows which one to call at the right time, depending on the session you start. So users, once they install it, don't really have to know a whole lot about that. You can set the levels, but if you don't intend to operate on HF, you don't need the VARA HF, they can load them independently. So, but like the Direwolf UZ7HO, none of those ah, guys yeah. have a mode that's compatible, right? No, the so uh, VAR FM only runs on Windows. Obviously, I would prefer it to work in other other modes, uh, particularly f uh, for some of our gateways. Uh, I think we'd all like to see more gateway options uh, for VARA. There are Linux options that work well for for WinLink RMS gateways, uh, but they don't support the VAR FM modem. I know that Scott has uh, implemented a node that uses a Linux uh, computer. I think it's a Pi as the gateway, but then speaks using TCP IP protocols to a Windows PC that simply operates as a modem. So that's a way that you can do it. I think most people just run RMS packet and uh, VARA FM on a, on a Windows PC. Uh, so is it, have you seen it being used as a transport for any other uh, networking software, or any other data software other than WinLink? Not, not at this time, uh, but it does have a published specification for that protocol that it's using, you know, the IP stack within the computer. Um, it's a connection-oriented protocol where you establish a connection with the, with the gateway. So uh, it's, it's different than, say, AX25, which can operate in an unconnected mode. Um, there are available other programs from the same author. There is a terminal program. I have not explored it. Uh, in theory, that would allow you to do things with a distant computer. So that is one way of interfacing to VARA FM. Perhaps others will write node software, chat software or something. Uh, and there is, a, what was the other one? Oh, there's a chat uh, system developing as well. But at this point in time, it appears to be just a point to point chat. I think in our MCOM environment, I think we can envision the need for a chat system, which is a multi-point chat. So if you had you know, six or seven remote stations, communicating with an EOC, a chat would be great. I, I'm looking for that sort of thing, but it doesn't yet exist in, in VARA. So uh, I think the short answer is limited to WinLink RMS gateways in the near term, but there is a space to innovate around using the modem for other things, and hopefully people do. Very cool. Uh, let's see here. Do I have... Uh, well, and I think, I think you addressed this, but I'll mention it here as well, because it's probably worth pointing out. Concerned about latest versions of Vera and WinLink, do I need to purchase a license for each computer installation, or does my call sign cover all my computers? Your call sign covers all, all uses of your call sign. So if you've got a home computer and you've got that laptop you keep for going out in your Go kit, 
uh, all of it can be licensed uh, with the same uh, the same registration key. The registration key supports use uh, of 16 SSIDs, which are the dash number after your call. So uh, there is a limit to 16 SSIDs, but at the same time, it doesn't appear to be a practical limit, um, and you can you can have it on multiple computers. I think we can probably get one more in here. Well, we'll see. Uh, there's lots of questions, by the way, so hopefully you can hang out in the breakout room. I, I would be happy to. More. So. Um, uh, can you quantify the speed limitation of a signal link or Cantronics TNC versus an external sound card if all else is equal? You have to do some math now. Well, well, I, I quantify. There was a thing there about Cantronics TNC. I missed that. Could you just read the question again? Sure. Can you quantify the speed limitation of a signal link or Cantronics TNC versus an external sound card if all else is equal? Right. So let's talk about the Cantronics thing first. Very commonly, they would be either 1,200 or 9,600 bits per second. So your raw speed over the radio is either 1,200 or 9,600 bits per second. Uh, with a sound card mode, uh, you could use the VARA FM. And I believe from the chart that we saw, the top end speed for that is 12 kilobits per second. So as, as a, a base case with VARA and a signal link, if you happen to have one, it's 12 kilobits per second. So uh, whatever, you know, 9,600 would be your top end speed if you could actually make 9,600 work. Um, with a Cantronics device, it required some very close tolerances in your radio to make, make that kind of work. Um, 1200 with a signal link running VARA. And if you're using one of the wider um, capable radios and radio interfaces, uh, we regularly see 25 kilobits here, here in Seattle. No, no hero trials or anything like that. Just, you know, everyday hams connecting with a nice clear line of sight path can regularly get 25 kilobits. Uh, to nodes such as the one I demoed with in Magnolia. Uh, it says, does Vera FM Autotune only work while connecting to a gateway or can it be used in a peer-to-peer -peer connection? I have no Vera FM gear gateways near me. Yes, it can be used in a peer-to-peer -peer mode uh, and Vara FM works in a peer-to-peer -peer mode. So if, you know, if that scenario you're planning for where there's nobody but, but two hams left uh, after whatever it was that happened, uh, yes, you can auto tune back and forth, check your levels, and uh, run peer to peer. And there's no reason why you, you can't have a a very good connection uh, up to 25 kilobits per second between two hams. In fact, uh, if you've got a particular use case and you need to communicate between you know two facilities, I don't know two EOCs or something with a lot of traffic, if you've got a good path between you, just move to a simplex channel, and you're not using up any of the other resources uh, to move a bunch of data. Uh, let's see. Here's one. Do you know what VARA stands for? Does it stand for something? <laughs> That's a really good question and one I should have been prepared for. Uh, <laughs> it might be that Scott knows the answer for that, but I, I have to admit that I don't. I've never seen it. I went to their website and everything. I've never seen it. But... And then uh, another licensing question. So one license will work for both the HF version and VARA FM, correct? That's correct. Yes. The license registration key which is $69 for a single purchase, or if you can get a group together, it's uh, typically $50 if you get a group of 10 to buy at the same time. Excellent. Okay, well, that is. Uh, those are the questions I have here. And um, so hopefully we can uh, have some people wander over to the breakout room and ask you a few more questions. I, uh, Scott Curry, if you're listening, I assume you're welcome there as well. And the two of you might have an interesting conversation. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, this was fantastic. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate the MicroHams uh, organizing this event and uh, really thank everyone for tuning in today. This is uh, Randy, W3RWN. Catch you later.